After reading great reviews on Benson Park, we thought we'd go and see what all the fuss was about. Located 2 hours and 20 minutes northeast of Adelaide, Benson Park turned out to be a real gem of a spot. On arrival, you see the tinsel horse at the gate. You then proceed through the gate and down the dusty driveway to the camping area. Hey guys, so we're here at Benson's Park. We're set up camp for the night. And as you can see around us, we're surrounded by wildlife. Check this out. You see our car and caravan over there? We've got some billy goats and horses. Plenty of horses here. It's, it's unreal. Nice green paddocks for them. The back here we've got some alpacas. So yeah, they're pretty funny. You got old mate over there. We've got some sheep in the back. And uh, you got the mega horse over there. He's massive, so tall. And some little Shetland ponies and some more billy goats. So yeah. This is a great spot, $15 for power. He's got flushing toilets, beautiful showers, and we're the only ones here. Can't get much better than that. And the Murray's not far away as well. Yeah, the Murray's just down there. His property is on like 500 hec sorry, 500 acres. It's nature walks, you can take your bike, go for a ride. There's plenty to do. Uh oh, the billy goat's coming back. Oh, we've got this black and white billy goat. He keeps ramming Kurt. Hang on, you ready? Look at him, he's coming straight for me. <laughs> so this is our camp spot, nestled under a shady tree, right beside some horse paddocks. After settling in, we decided to go and see the animals. The animals were all so tamed, and you pat and hug pretty much all of them. The big Clydesdale horse, we were a bit wary of, purely because of its size. Coco and Lulu, the Shetland ponies, were quite cute. They followed ragamuffin around everywhere. Later that afternoon, we got to get involved with the animals and help Ken feed them all. The jumping goats were quite funny. We then got to go and feed the alpacas, Tammy, Felicity and Chloe. Such a bunch of pretty girls. It was then time to round up the sheep. We then headed to the back paddocks to round up some horses out and to let the two brown girls in. They couldn't reach the hay like the horses can, so Kurt threw some out for them. It was then back around to the main stable to feed Ragamuffin. Our campsite is really close to the horses, hey? Plus a few more horses to feed. As you can tell, there are plenty of horses here with lots of mouths to feed. 
It's crazy that Ken does this every day, and sometimes with no help. After a good few hours of doing the rounds, it was happy hour in the wagon. BYO drinks and Ken provided some nibbles. We were only planning one night, but enjoyed our stay so much that we quickly signed up for another night. Ken's property has so many walking and riding trails to go on. It also backs onto the Murray River. Check out those views. Plenty of stuff to keep everyone entertained, no matter what age. Ken also offers horse trail rides, from one hour rides to half and full days. Just talk to him on what you want. We had a nice relaxing day around the farm while Ken was out on a ride. Later that afternoon, some of our friends we had met at the Barossa drove 200 kilometers to come join us on the farm. Late in the afternoon, we helped Ken prep prints for a special ride. Ken has been training prints to pull a cart around and we were lucky enough to get involved. We all hiked up towards the Murray, taking turns on the cart while the others walked. fortunate Ken gave us this unique experience around his property. We were also very grateful. After a short walk we helped get all the gear off Prince and fed him some special treats of carrots to thank him for the ride. It was that time again to feed all the animals. We sat back a bit while Christy and Wendy got their hands dirty and experienced what we had the day before. The billy goats were hanging around as they hadn't been fed yet. Ken fed them next and decided it would be a great time to get me sitting underneath them while they jumped. Not sure if I should have been alarmed when he laughed and said he'd never done this before. After feeding some of the minions in the paddock, it was time to feed the sheep. Ken gave us another wonderful experience. Remember this day, man, for it will be yours for all time. <laughs> what an experience that was. Ken told us how he does this trick a lot for kids' birthday parties, and sometimes when he lets the sheep out, kids drop their plates and run. A few more jobs to do before the day's end. We all had to go fill up some water troughs for the horses. The majority of them were old bathtubs. With the hot days, they sure did drink a lot. Ken definitely has a lot of quirky items on his property. So many interesting things to look at when you look closely. Giant cactus plants, chickens out back, old school wagons and saddles galore. Because we had company, Ken suggested that we got the fire going. We liked that idea. It was nice watching the fire, having some beers and exchanging travel stories with Chris and Wendy. The next day we decided to move on. 
We left behind Ames' old bike. Ken insisted on leaving it there as he would revamp it. It was pretty knackered and we were going to get rid of it soon anyways. A few last minute pats with our favourite horses, then it was time to hit the road. Catch you later Benson's Park, you've been wonderful. Huge thank you to Ken for his hospitality. Stay tuned as we find some more cracker spots as we track along the Murray. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our adventures. Cheers legends.